time stopping by the channel welcome to uh, the Waven Almanac podcast channel my name is Dawn I am a British expat originally from Manchester which is the northwest of England and for over 20 years I've been living on the border of Amsterdam here in the Netherlands um, so welcome welcome everybody I've tried to not leave it too long since the last uh, filmed episode 15 and today's episode 16 did I mention that? Uh, let's get the formalities over with and then we'll dive straight into the podcast. Um, where to find me on social media? So um, I also have a vlog channel here on YouTube which is called Dawn's Days because it's all about days in my life and I'll put links below in the description box of um, social media you know where you can find me and also uh, anything I mention I'll try and put a link or if not a a descriptive text in the uh, description box and um, don't forget if you want to say hello in the comments uh, I'd love to hear from you chatter away amongst your, uh, yourselves and um, if that's not your thing it's okay I'm just really happy you've chose to spend some of your time with me while I waffle on about all the crafty stuff I've been getting up to firstly so the Dawn Stage channel that's the vlog channel um, I am quite active on Instagram with Dawn's Days, uh, I do have the Woven Almanac uh, account, but I don't, I can't manage two social media accounts as well as two YouTube channels. It's quite a lot, um, and I also host a really, uh, it's very small, uh, pretty quiet group at the moment on Facebook, which is Crafty World Want. So if you want to join uh, any of those, and uh, if you've been working on something, if I mention something now, and you really would like to show me or each other. Go on over to Facebook and post a picture. I'd love to see um, what you've been up to. So um, that's where you can find me. Um, I'll give you, so my format, I usually do a quick, a, a short uh, life update because obviously with the vlog channel, you know, I, I, I pretty much film, even though I post weekly the vlog, I film daily. So if you watch that, you'll know what I've been up to, but I know vlog, vlogs are not for everybody. So I usually give a very short uh, life update and in today's episode, I've got some uh, knitting talk, a bit of crochet, a bit of painting, and uh, I've got quite a fair bit of incoming and um, future plans to talk about. So um, what have I been up to? I scribbled some notes down. So since I last vlogged with you, sorry, I've got yarny fibres on my face and my nose. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, since I last spoke to you, so... Um, I did a really short um, little piece of film in one of the vlogs. I think it was in episode 270 on the Dawn's Day channel. I went with some girlfriends into Amsterdam. One of my friends, Fiona, turned 60, and we treated her to high tea at the Grand Hotel Krasnopolsky, which if you've ever been to Amsterdam, it's actually on Dam Square opposite the palace, and it was lovely. We had an amazing afternoon, and um, we also did a spot of shopping, which, and I'll show you something about that at the end in the incoming. Um, the weather here, it's been really unpredictable considering as I'm filming this, we've only just gone into September. Um, we've had a lot of rain, a lot of rain. Um, if you watch the vlog, you'll know we have a little, um, a small motorboat, which we love to sail around the canals here in Holland. And I just had a coughing fit, so hopefully I've cut that out. I haven't got a drink in front of me. How ill-prepared. I'm not a professional. Um, yeah, so uh, our little motorboat, we finally had a break in the weather, so we went out for a lovely sail. So if you want to see a little bit of that footage, uh, that's in one of the latest, um, as I'm filming the latest um, videos, maybe episode 271, maybe, could be. Um, uh, the other thing, so... I've started walking, I really need to get my, not so much weight loss, but more condition, I really need to get my fitness up, so I've started walking uh, every Monday with one of my friends, and also, um, if you have watched the vlogs, you'll know, uh, before summer, another friend and I, we started doing, um, like, dance classes, but it was more keep fit slash dance and not zumba not high energy kind of thing so that's going to be starting soon can't wait for that we're going up to level two um and what else oh i've been redoing reshuffling reorganizing our spare bedroom and we bought a bed and we threw loads of stuff away so we're still as i'm filming this we're still busy with that so yeah that's pretty much uh life updates did a bit of menopause talk as well 
a lot of us are suffering or we have suffered or we know we're uh, on the cusp of suffering so I've done a bit of talking about that in the vlog as well so um I think that's pretty much all I've been up to. I'm, I don't think it'll be a long one today. Uh, a lot of, as I'm filming this, a lot of people are doing September September vlogs. So I know you've got a lot of content to watch, um, but hopefully um, people will be tuning in. I'm not talking to myself right now. Uh, so let's get into the nitty talk because I've said the weather has been a bit crummy. However, it's we're suddenly in um, a late summer, and I'm, as I'm talking to you, I'm quite hot. <laughs> Uh, because uh, I finished, when I say languishing, I mean an ancient whip. I tried to look back in the old uh, podcast because um, what if, you, if you're new here, what you won't realise is I've been filming a podcast for quite a few years now, but I used to host them on the Dawn's Days, uh, the vlog channel, and it just got a bit confusing for people with the type of content. So I started the Woven Almanac and, you know, I only post... Uh, craft things here and live stuff on the vlog channel although there's always some crafty chat because I'm a bit of a craftaholic but I was trying to look back in the craft workshop podcast that was what the channel uh, the the podcast series was called and I got back as far as February 2022 I gave an update on on this um pullover but I can't find when I, I cast it on it's got to be 2021 so Anyway, um, I pulled it out, had a look, and realised I didn't have much to do. I only had the sleeves to do. So I thought, you know, stop with all the small projects, focus on the larger ones. So I finished it. Uh, I don't know if you can see, I don't know. I've got uh, these light little eyelets uh, running down back and front. Um, and then I'll try and stand back a little bit. or oh, move your back. Bear with me. As I said, I'm not a professional. Uh, you can see a little sneak of something like that. So yeah, this is, it is supposed to be a cropped uh, sweater or pullover. It's a bit out of shape because I've, ha I've had it hung on a really <laughs> rubbish hanger. But it have, I have blocked it. So uh, as you can see, it is on me, my, my waist is here. So it's still, this is fairly short for me. I did debate whether to pull back the ribbon and do it a little bit longer. But actually, I would wear it with a skirt and I think it, it works quite well with this. So, um... Yeah, this is, I've knitted mine in an Aran way. I've, I can't find the ball band. I do recall it was by uh, a Turkish company, Elise, which is quite easy to get hold of here, here in the Netherlands. And as I said, I only had the sleeves to do, and I, I always intended to do shorter sleeves. So um picked it up and uh, carried on with it. And uh, here we go, there's the, uh, there's the back. I don't know if you can see the eyelets over the shoulder. Um, yeah, wearing an Aran sweater, in 20 plus degree heat uh, at midday in the Netherlands is probably not the best idea. But uh, I'm not wearing any Spanx. Uh, so normally when I wear a skirt, I would wear Spanx. But I, I did decide this 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 length of sweater is better suited to um, probably one of my sort of, you know, Dixie print uh, skirts. So I think that's what I will pair it up with. Although I think in the winter months, it'd be nice. To, I like to layer as I just said, you know, menopause, we like layering. Um, it's very, very warm. Uh, what else can I say about it? I'm kicking myself because I do know when I did cast this on, I had difficulties with the eyelets and I remember giving a great bit of advice about what to watch out for. And I wish I could find the video, but it's, it, I mean, it's back in 2021. And, you know, as you've gathered, if I said, over 270 episodes on that channel and plus on this channel it, it's a lot of footage to try and look back over all i can remember is um i did strongly recommend that you place um a lot of uh stitch markers before you started these um these eyelets i don't know if the camera's picking them up maybe that yeah you can just see there it's lovely it's, it's a little bit like a feathery fern kind of shape um yeah, and I ha as I said, I have blocked it. This is, uh, it's wool, it's a wool mix. It has got a little bit of polymer or, or, or nylon in it, um, or acrylic, but it is pre predominantly, it's, it is wool. Uh, and I'm really, really hot now. So if you bear with me, I'm going to change out of this and maybe I can give you a closer look. Hold on. Oh, that's better. I've got a thin t-shirt on now. I'm so hot. It's really, really thick. Um, as I said, because it's Aaron, it is um, it is really really warm. Um, I do 
if I recall back, if you've been around for a while, you'll remember this. Um, I lost uh, the bag of wool when I was mid knitting it. So I bought, I managed to get hold of more wool and then I knitted a bit and then I found the original wool because you know, the same lot number. So there is what I have seen, I think this will pill, but it's fine. What I have noticed, you can see, I don't know if this is part tension or maybe, oops, maybe another lot number. You can see the stitch definition here, but you know, it's fine when I wear it. It seems to be, it's quite square. So it could even be a design feature. So I'll give you, the, that's the, that's the shoulder. And uh, that's, it goes out around the back as well. Um, if, so it's, as I said, it's the Felix Pullover. This is by Amy Christoffers. I can't remember. I think it might be a free pattern on Ravelry. I think it might be. And if you're, um, if you've never knitted a garment before and you want to start with something, I would recommend this in the, the fact that because it's Aran, it, work, it does work up quite quickly. However, as I said, these eyelets caused me as a fairly new garment knitter i did have some struggles with this so just make sure that wherever you wherever you can see in the pattern you're going to have to do um was it a yarn over i can't remember now or you pick up something place as many stitch markers as you can and also write down what where, where you place them before the pattern and you, you should be fine and you can do it long sleeve as i said you can do it long uh long in the body uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't knit another one because i really enjoyed it I would knit it a bit longer and I will probably go up a size because this is, as you saw, this is quite fitted, but I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, I would probably in the winter wear like um, a cardigan over it and I think it would, it's got like that twin set vibe. So um, I think that's everything I can say about it. So yeah, if uh, if you've knitted it before and you want to give some, um, let's see if you can see that. There you go. You can see them now. If, um, if you have any advice for anybody or you've knitted them or you struggled with it, you know, let, let everybody, let me and everybody know in the comments, you know, it's good to share tips with each other. So yeah, that felt so good to get a very, very, very old languishing whip off the needles. And I have a very, very, an even older sweater on the needles. And because now I've finished that, I've got a couple of things to show you. And I'm determined now to start trying to clear my whips. I did drop something on the floor. Oh, it was my, my glasses. Bear with me. I'm going to do a bit of reaching around because I've got that many things around me. And actually, I've got stuff I'm working on on the, uh, the kitchen table. Um, knitting. Oh, yeah. The other thing I'll show you. I think I mentioned this in the last podcast, what I was working on. This is the... Um, Everyday Eyelet uh, Cardigan by Ashley Lillis. I've knitted a few of her patterns before and I really, she does a lot of free patterns and uh, she tends, she does quite a lot in chunky knit and I find her pattern instructions are very, very clear. The only thing I struggled with this is, I'll tell you, she's written the pattern that you can use any weight of yarn and any size. And she's just, she always does very, very good tutorials with it. However, I did struggle with trying to figure out how many um, stitches to cast on. So I'll tell you, I wear like an English uh, 16 to 18 or a European, a Dutch European uh, 44 to 46. So I've cast on for the panels, because she says you have to ca cast on in, I think it was in groups of four, I think, plus five so for mine on the the front panels i cast on a total of 29 stitches i'm going to show you in a minute and for the back uh, panel i cast on 65 so if you're if you're my size and you fancy having a going chunky knit i'll show you what i'm, I'm knitting mine in at the moment uh, i would recommend 29 for the front panels and 65 for the back and i think you, you should be okay um, so how far have I got? So I've done this for two, oh, I've dropped the ball band. I've done the two front panels. So this is, this is how the pattern works up. Sorry, again. Uh, this is a bit longer. If I can move it back. Oh, this is a, making a bit of a dog's dinner of this, aren't I? Uh, yeah, so if you can see, I've done my, probably, uh, you know, just, just past my hips. 
So um, I will, I don't, I won't put buttons on this. I'm going to have this as um more like a, a cardigan jacket. And obviously there's going to be um a button band on it, but I won't have the actual eyes. So this is one panel. This is the other panel. And you start uh, bottom up. So you can just keep going till you're happy with the length that you like. So this will be the front of mine. So you can see casting on 29 and with the uh, button band, it's, it's going to be a lot of, it's going to be quite, um, it, there'll be a bit, a fair bit of positive ease in this because, you know, obviously I'll block it. And um, also if you're interested in the length, um, I can turn the round, the pattern repeat, there's uh, two rows of eyelets with each pattern. So I've done uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did nine repeats for the length that I'm, I've just shown you. But you can have it cropped, you could have it knee length, calf length, ankle length. I think it'd make a really nice, um, like a coat, coatigan, I think they're called. So I've done the uh, two front panels, um, and probably a third of the way through the back panel, I'm knitting mine on Symphony, uh, Knit Pro Symphonies. Uh, so there's the, the back panel. So you see, it's quite it's quite wide. And I think if I recall rightly, the, the sleeves are in, like a drop sleeve. So it's, you, yeah, obviously you're knitting pieces. I'm not a big fan of pearl knitting, but you know, because it's chunky knit, but it's such a lovely pattern. And it's working up super quick. Obviously, the back panel's taking longer. And I can't remember if the sleeves are plain. I think they're just plain knit. I'm going to see if I can knit the sleeves in the round. But obviously, when I've finished it, I'll, you know, I'll do a breakdown of the pattern, what I did. And I think it's nice to share, um, you know, ha what, what, how many stitches you cast on. Because it is a free pattern, and I can do that. And then um, I did say, but I've dropped it on the floor. Bear with me again. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bad back as well. Um, so because I wasn't sure about the pattern, um, I thought I'm just going to go for a, um, a sort of cheaper um, yarn for now. And then if I want to knit it up, you know, because Chunky and Aaron um, yarn, you know, it, the higher end, it can work out really expensive, especially, you know, when you've got melons like I have. You know, when they, a lot of these pattern designers have really skinny ladies modelling them. They're thinking, mm -mm, I need like four times the quantity. So this is from budgetyarn.com. And it's, as you can see, it's a chunky acrylic. And uh, the colour, this uh, taupe colour, mushroom colour is um, 005. Um, and it does call for eight millimeter needles and do mine on nine millimeters, which is what the pattern calls for. Cause I, I wanted it to be more like a loose chunky knit. But um, yeah, I mean, it's really, it's lovely to knit with. It's not splitty at all. And um, I've dropped the wool on the floor now, but um, yeah, it's very, and it, sometimes with acrylic, it can be, what well, it can squeak on the needles and it's been absolutely fine with me. So, um, budgetyarn.com I can recommend that um, it, will it peel probably this Elise was um, a lot more expensive I mean it's not it was still mid-range I think like five between five and seven euro a ball but you know it's I can see it already this will peel you know so you know the most expensive yarns in the world unless it actually says anti-pilling can peel so um, and that's all I've done with knitting. As I said, I'm trying to do bigger projects at the moment. Um, I've got three dishcloths to catch up on. Still need to do that. And uh, socks, I've just, I don't know, I've just sort of come to a bit of a halt on the socks at the moment. And I can't say why, because I absolutely love knitting socks. And I think I've shown you in the last podcast, I had some socks in the bag ready to cast on. And I've just, I've been more focused on garments at the moment. It seems to be what's barking my interest. So talking of garments, um, I did show you my text cardigan. So I've made, I've made progress on that. Uh, so I can show you. Um, again, this is pretty much made up now. I did in episode 15, I did put a link for a, a good YouTube tutorial. The, there's loads of free patterns for this. So, but you can, you'll be able to get an idea of 
how it looks. As you can see, I've got loads of ends to weaving. Now, here's where I sort of went a little bit off piste. I did, um, I did start with a crochet uh, ribbing and I didn't like it. I found it really messy and I want, I want it to be more like a bomber style, you know, like a bit more cinched. So I actually just picked up, picked up, um, three stitches, miss one, three stitches, and I've done a two by two, um, rib on the bottom of mine. Uh, this is in Stylecraft, uh, Special DK. So yesterday I seamed up the sleeves, you seam them up, it's a hexagon shape, I seamed up the sleeves. So what I'm going to do now, I think I'm going to carry on all around the neckline. Shall I pop it on and then you can have a little look? Oops. Because now I'm cooling off a bit. So, and I've got loads and loads of ends to weave in. So it's not a really, really loose fit, but I'm happy with the fit. And you can see uh, this effect here, you know, it's more like cinched in. I like this gathered effect here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do like a quite a big uh, band in this stony colour for the ribbing uh, and then I'll probably finish off with some ribbing and then I'm going to do the rest of the sleeves. I would like the, uh, like a balloon shape and I'm, I'm going to do them probably in this stone colour. Um, so yeah, that's how far, yeah, it looks quite small but once I've built everything up, um, it you know it will it'll probably reach about here in the middle so um yeah I love the colours of chose and it's nice because in the um, shops at the moment there's um crochet is still really really hip so I would probably wear this as again as a jacket with um jeans I, I don't think it lends itself well to like a flowery ditzy um skirt but I think it'd be a great you know autumn or even winter uh, jacket you know just to throw on again layering layering so I've made I've made really good progress on that now I've done the bottom ribbon I think this will go quite quickly I'm not decided yet if I'm going to do US term single or double um double um stitch around the uh the front of it yeah I'm just that's the beauty of crochet because it works up so quickly and it's it, it's really easy to pull back crochet compared to knitting uh, I think I'm just going to experiment a bit. As you can see, I've left quite a big gap uh, across the back of the neck, indeed, to fill it in. So, yeah, it's going to be um, lots of colour and then sleeves and, uh, and um, collar in this stone colour. So, yeah, I've made good, good progress on that. By the time I uh, film the next um, episode, it will be finished. Hopefully, I would have worn it. But as a result, because I've been extensively knitting on garments. I've not done any of the smaller projects. And I did show you Webster the, Webster the Duck. Um, not really done anything more on him. I've done his beak and popped some eyes in. And I'll show you that in the next episode if I do any, if I make any headway with it. Uh, how are we doing for time? Um, right, painting. You've seen something poking up in the background. If you watched last episode, I've shown you a little wooden rocking horse that I picked up in the thrift store and I've, I'm like 90% finished with painting him. So here he is. Um, I'll try and find a picture of the before. Uh, he was just painted in, you know, like a matte grey and I wanted like a dappled um, horse and then I've just, with my dotting tool, I've just done like random, you know, gold um, little blobs around his rocker. And then um, I've done a, a, a lot, a lot of stippling, a lot. So I painted them all in white acrylic. And then um, with a dry brush, I've just been stippling. Uh, wasn't sure what to do about the eyes, but I think they're fairly even and quite simple. I still need to finish off dotting on that side. And, um, you know, with the gold detailing and, I uh, don't know where they are. I have them lying around. Yep, yeah, here they are. I'll show you. Um, when I went to Amsterdam, when I was shopping, I bought these from Sustran Kroon or Sustran Green. I bought these little jingle bells. So uh, I am going to make a little, um, like a little rain, a drapey rain with jingle bells on him. And um, yeah, absolutely loved painting that. What do you think? That's I think that's quite a big transformation. And um, 
yeah, I think it was five euro, not even, from the uh, the thrift store. So that's going to be a lovely Christmas ornament. Um, I don't know if I'll put stirrups on him. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I've done the main part of him now. And um, yeah, what can I say? I have a rocking horse. I'm going to take my glasses off. I can see better. Yeah. There you go. Put this down. Let's see if we can get an image for the thumbnail. Did we get one? We'll see when this is edited. <laughs> the joys of video editing and Facebook, uh, YouTube. Um, so that's all I've been busy making. The other thing I have bought, and I forget where I've bought this from now, I bought another junk journal kit, a Christmas one, because I'm busy making inserts for the, my Christmas um, journal. And I thought I would have finished it by now. I've fussy cut everything out. Oops. So I've got a whole junk journal here and all I need to do is fold things and glue them and uh, distress them. So when, um, when I've finished that, I'll uh, be sure to show you these loads and loads of little cards and, you know, there's all kinds of things. I think this is like a fold out one, similar to what I've shown you in the last, um, last uh, episode. So when I've done a bit more on that, as I said, I've done all hard bit. It's just like the fun bit now. Um, so I can show you that. Uh, right, this, so, well, I'll talk about incoming, which is also future plans, uh, but I did, I for completely forgot to tell you something, or show you something, in last, uh, last month, I think, no, it, yeah, last month's episode, I was going to tell you, um, I was going to show you yarn for my, uh, when I cast on the ranunculus, and when I watched it all back, I was like, I didn't even show you, so, some of you, you might, some of you might even be here from Karen who stitches and jacks her video or even Jeanette who's Crafty Clay Creations. Um, in the end of July, beginning of August, I went over to the UK and met the ladies. We went to Black Sheep Wool. I did speak about it in episode 15 and there, were, there is some uh, footage on the vlog channel on Dawn's Danes. And I'd spoken about how I was going to cast on the ranun ranunculus again and I forgot to show you the yarn. So... I'm going to bend down again, bear with me. Um, when, because Karen and Jeanette go to Black Sheep a lot, and it was my first time visiting, Karen very kindly showed me where the bargain corner was. And I sort of, I cast my eye over it, and I was like, hmm. Anyway, I went back later and I had a real good look, and I picked up this bag, ginormous a bag of wool, and it was at 19 pounds and I thought, this is going to be an amazing wool for my ranunculus. So I'm going to pull out, it's still sealed from when I went to the UK because I've been waiting to show you. So, and I think, how many balls did I get? One, two, three, I think there's like 20 balls in it. So there's more than enough for a sweater and plus other things. So it's, um, it's King Cole Panache and it's a DK yarn. And it's like a mild brown. It's got little bits of orange and grey and beige in it. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. And it's really soft. And it's got, I don't know if you can see, it's got a bit of a halo on it. It's It feels beautiful. So, um, yeah, this is, uh, this. I'm going to cast on the ranunculus when I finish all these garments on the go. So this is 50% wool and 50% premium acrylic. And you get approximately uh, 342 yards or 312 metres. Um, I don't know if this is a discontinued yarn. I don't know why it was in the bargain corner. But if you like the look of it, it's shade chestnut and it's 2064. I don't know if the camera is focusing on that. Probably not. Uh, so as I said, I've got more than enough to knit a ranunculus. So watch this space. Another future languishing yarn. I've decided that DK, it feels quite thin for a DK, if I'm honest with you. But anyway, I'm going to knit it up as a double knit. Um, I think I might fare better with this, for, with a DK for the ranunculus for the first time. Because, you know, I was going to knit it in um, light uh, fingering or sock weight. And I, so I think this is probably going to be, bit, I'll fare a bit better with this. And I'm just going to do it all in the one colour. I think they're all the same lot number. Um, I hope so, and if not, well, we'll figure it out. Uh, but yeah, what a bargain. £20. So I was kicking myself when I didn't show you. 
So I've shown you now, sort of dawn of the past and dawn of the future. We're merging. Um, I need to just pick some more things up off the floor. Bear with me. Okay, not quite craft related, but earlier in the um, podcast, I, I told you I went to um, Amsterdam for high tea. And I also did a spot of shopping whilst I was there with the ladies. And we popped into TK Maxx, which is TJ Maxx in the US. And um, I picked up this amazing pumpkin and I shared it in the vlog. And it's so good, I wanted to share it in the podcast because... As I'm filming this, we're all busy with our autumn fall makes and, you know, I will also do a little autumn vignette on the fireplace and um, I thought, I'll show you. It, I said in the vlog when I showed it that it reminded me of the of a Cinderella pumpkin. It's a little, it's like, I don't know if the camera's picking up, but it's like a bluish grey and obviously all this gold kind of scroll work around it and this is the top of it isn't it beautiful i think it's made from resin so it's not very heavy um one of our lovely viewers maureen if you're watching maureen i already told our viewers on the vlog uh, maureen was on a mission and she managed to get to tk maxx and buy herself one so i was super happy for her so if you're looking for inspiration for fall decor because you know obviously i crochet pumpkins and i knit leaves and all the rest of it and i just think having you can mix like handmade stuff with uh, store-bought stuff. So that's one pumpkin, very light. Uh, I'll put him down or her, I don't know. What do we refer to plants as? And then this is another one. I have got quite a few pumpkins in my collection. This is like a rose gold kind of pumpkin and it's got these metal like vine leaves on it. So yeah, I'll be, um, I'll be in the next week, so I'll be getting ready to decorate the fire for fall. I do want to crochet or knit a, a nice garland because at the moment I've only got, um, I think I've got like a little acorn one, you know, a shop bought one, and I would like to maybe um, crochet, crochet some pumpkin ones. I think Jeanette has mentioned that she was doing something out of Kate Eastwood, um, she, one of her books, which I have. It's like garlands and wreaths, I think it is, and she's got quite a few autumn things in there I always make like little components from it so I might have a look through that and if I do make something I'll be sure to show you so I'm going to pop the pumpkin down now so uh sticking up I did say I've got quite a lot of incoming but I, uh, I'm going to share it with you because maybe it, insp it inspires you to um you know have a go at something so as mentioned um this is what I'm knitting, this chunkyarn.com, this is what I'm knitting the Everyday Eyelet sweater in. As I really liked it so much, I fancied making another one and I bought this lovely, like a jade green, it's like an emerald, it's very jewel-like, I hope it's picking it up on the camera. If you're interested, this one is colour 087 and... Um, so as soon as I've cast off the beige torpy one, I'm going to cast on a green one because I'm really, really enjoying that pattern. And you think, well, you know, if you're enjoying something, there's no, you can, you've bought the pattern or download it if it was free and you can just make as many as you like. Uh, this was uh, from, um, I think it's in the Holland, it's wool plying. So I'm not sure you might recognise the pink bag. Uh, like yarn square or wool square i don't i don't know but uh yeah if i want um uh, yarnplaza.com so in germany it's uh, uh wollplatz dot d in the netherlands it's wollplatz dot nl and in the rest of the world yarnplaza.com these i always find that they deliver super quick so when i'm you know when i, I can't find a needle or, you know hook size or i've run out of something they deliver quite quickly so Yes, I like to buy from them. And also they do have um, Stylecraft special DK, so I tend to buy mine from there. Uh, right, the other thing, I've fallen down another crafty rabbit hole. Yes, I know, you're all saying, oh, here we go, Dawn, what have you done now? One of these adverts popped up on my Instagram and I've always wanted to try resin craft. So as we do, I clicked on the link and ordered some resin. And I've yet to try it, but I'll show you in case you're in, it's called, it's by a company called Epodex. I'm not sure if they're based in Germany because it came really quickly. Um, so I've ordered, I think it was 14 euro and you get um, half a kilo of um, clear epoxy resin 
and uh, 0.25, um, so a quarter of a kilo of the of clear hardener, which this you could do quite a lot with this. You know, they're generous sizes, and um, then I have got a, a silicone mold, but I thought, wow, well, I would like some more before I, you know, think about what I'm going to make. So I went on Amazon and I ordered like a beginner resin kit. And I don't think I shared it on the vlog. So I thought, well, I, you know, I'm going to wait to fulfill the podcast. So I ordered this kit. Again, it wasn't expensive. And I was really surprised at how much came with it. And, I, and I've actually not, I have not opened it properly. But uh, it came with, like an unboxing. Everything's sticking. Sorry, bear with me. Because it's silicone. I won't take it out the... Um, Wrap, but it came with uh, the full alphabet so it's you can see it's this deep and you can put all little things glitter or colours and then you pour your resin in and you leave it to set I don't know usually overnight 24 hours so it came with a full alphabet set and it, it feels like quite nice silicon as well and then you got this little tray uh, with all these tiny little bottles of glitter and beads and you know stuff to sprinkle in your resin projects i mean that's a lot and it goes a long way this stuff that's sequins uh three six nine twelve on each row and these four rows so what just short of a hundred little bottles of sprinkly bits and then you get a bag of accessories with it Honestly, I was amazed. I've seen these pop up, you know, and I'm always like, oh, I don't know, what's it like? But then you get like bezels, so you can put pictures in and pour a little bit of resin in them. So, you know, a few of them. Some tassels. You can use them with all kinds of stuff on bags. And then you get all kinds of uh, key rings, chains, little uh, earring um, posts, um, little uh, screws. Um, you could see them like screwing hooks, they were there a second ago, uh, so you can make uh, hangers, you know, on your um, your alphabet pieces, but that's not all, there was another bag in it, I will put a link to this, because I think it's such a bargain, another little bag, and again, as you can see, I've not opened it, I've, I, I poked it in, I thought I'm going to wait for the podcast, and then you get a whole accessory pack, oh, there's also some glitter in this as well, sorry, I'm crinkling, bear with me, I wanted to do it live, live with you, because you also get some more resin mould in this. So you get a whole load of um, little mixing spoons and pipettes. And then more silicon moulds. There's loads you can do with this. Oh, dropping them everywhere. That's it, because silicon moulds they tend to stick with each other. Uh, but I mean, you could use them with Fimo clay, air dry clay, not just for resin. Uh, so this has got um, like little shapes. Uh, so you could do like little key rings or bookmarks or, you know, if you sew little uh, zipper hangers. Uh, and they have uh, little holes in them so you can put um, like a jump ring through them. Uh, and then you get another tray of different shapes. A little jigsaw puzzle, you know, you can get pendants. I mean, really, it, it, it's endless. But that's not all. It's, I'm really impressed with how much you get. Uh, you get these little silicon molds that you can you pour into, so it's it's close at the bottom. And then you pour so this square shape, uh, oblong shape, uh, like a hexagon, um, circular. And again, you know, these are, and then like, is that a rhom rhombus? Is it a rhombus? Like a diamond shape. And then these are, you know, like little pendants. And that's not all. Get another little tray to make like little jewels. I mean, if you junk journal, these would be great. Imagine put a uh, gold resin or silver. You know, you've got like little studs. You can make all your own studs to put on like on book covers. You know, if you do Christmas cards and uh, you literally pour in your resin, let it set and then pop them out and that's it. 
So yeah, there's loads here, love hearts, diamonds, stars, triangles, squares, and they're all uh, faceted. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. So they're, they're like gems when you pop them out. That's not all, that's not all. Gosh, there's a lot. So this is um, a, a circular one. This is uh, for like a bangle. Uh, this, I wouldn't get my hand through that. That could be a bangle. You could use it as a picture frame. Uh, yeah, loads of stuff. And then this is uh, like a two piece that you can, you can get it out. And then this is, you can make a ball. So you pop the resin in, uh, seal it shut. I would actually let the resin semi dry and then um, add them together. And you can make like a clear ball. You have seen them with um, like dandelion seeds in them. You know, put all like um, dried flowers, glitter. You can pop little plastic trinkets in them. And then um, this is also another tiny uh, ring. Again, one size, but you could make a little, you know, I don't think it would, maybe my pink, I've got fat fingers, but, um, you know, you can make lovely uh, glitter rings. So you get a lot, a really a lot. And then you get a little set of tools with it. So like a, a, a little drill. So when you've, you know, if you imagine you've made a round pendant and you do drill a little hole in it. And then these, are, as I said before, you get all these little screw Eyelets in gold and silver, really generous quantities, and uh, oh, a little bit more glitter thrown in for good measure. Mm, Christmas ornaments. So yeah, I thought I'd um, oh, there's some more little little bag of silicon. Oh, that's cute. Don't you can see that on the camera? It's like a little kitty. Hello, kitty. I mean, the stuff you could make with this. Actually, looking at these jingle bells, you could even put jingle bells in them. I think you can put in, pretty much pop anything in resin, not wax. I did check that because um, you might know I like to do um, wax seals. You can't put wax in them and you can't put like organic matter in, although dried flowers you can. So, yeah. So I fell down this bit of a rabbit hole. I'll put that away in a minute. Um, and something exciting will be coming up. A company time to time companies reach out to me and you know ask if I'll do a collaboration you know if I want to do like a like a brand deal kind of thing and often you don't get paid for them but they'll give you um so many goods up to a certain value and then the deal is that you do you an unboxing and an honest product review I'm very clear with anybody I, I do a collaboration with that I'm going to open it live on camera, not live live, but you know, you'll see my real reaction as I open it, like I've done this, this is not a brand or collaboration or I bought this myself. Um, but I think it's nice you get the first impression of things. So a company has just, we've just sort of signed the deal. Um, and um, I won't give you too much away, but in, you know, hopefully in the next month or two, um, I can show you there'll be something resin but also other crafts related to it. So I'm quite excited about that. So yeah, uh, I believe resin can be a bit smelly and a bit messy. So um, I need to pick a quiet day where I'm gonna sit and play with the resin. And um, when I make stuff, I'll let you know, I'm a complete newbie. I've done, you know, I've worked with polymer clay for years, you know, 30 years, uh, dry clay, um, you know, I'm moulding things, wax, as I said. I've even done bronze sculpted. Uh, but it's the first time playing with resin, so I'm quite excited about that. Right, I've got one more thing to show you. Uh, and then I'll just tell you about future plans. This, um, I've not yet shown this on the vlog yet. If I think my calculations when I'm going to upload this. But um, we had a market in our village uh, at the weekend as I'm filming this. And I spotted this and I had to have it. And I know the crafting community will really appreciate it. That's why I'm showing it on the podcast. Um, I bought this, I uh, put a few things in it just to play with it. I bought this beautiful, like a dollhouse, well, not a doll, a doll's uh, dresser. And it already uh, painted, it, I think it's chalk paint, they've waxed it, it's already lined with paper. Uh, the drawers, they do open, although it's this drawer's stuck 
I need to sort of give it a bit of manipulation and the doors are sticking a bit they do open so there's some shelves in there I won't try it now because I'll probably end up dropping it but um I don't know where I'm going to put it or what I'm going to put on it but I just saw it and I was my heart just sang when I saw it so I just put some little little leather doll shoes that I've had for ages on it and there's something out of my doll's house isn't that beautiful I've always wanted one so you know maybe I could put some little crochet things in it or like crafty things I've made so let's see maybe it can sit in one of the uh maybe it's time to put all this wall out of the way and put it in there in the alcove we'll see so I just thought I'd share that with you because I'm totally in love with it it is quite old um and I don't think it's shop bought there's all like nails in it and stuff so I think probably a, a, a very kind grandpa or uncle or dad has made that for somebody it's beautiful um so yeah that's all my incoming quite a lot um but as you see I've been working on bigger projects so not a lot of crafting things to show you but yeah I think yeah. I'm just really into my garments at the moment that's William my son one of my sons has just come downstairs um right so I'm going to wrap up the only thing I'm just going to mention because by the time this loads I won't film another podcast till after the fact I think I did mention it in the last episode I'm going to Yarndale. If you don't know, Yarndale is a big, uh, like a wool craft festival in Yorkshire, in the UK. And I've always wanted to go. So I've decided to go. Uh, and that, I think, I keep thinking it's in October. I think it's in September. I'm not used to. Apparently some people have this in their agenda every year and it's the highlight of them. So I'm a newbie. But what I was going to say is, if you're going to Yarndale and you happen to see me, obviously I don't know what any of you look like, but you all know what I look like. Please don't be shy. Come on over, say hello. Maybe we could take a pic together. Maybe you want to say hello to the vlog channel. But um, yeah, don't be shy. Don't feel awkward or I, I, I will not mind if anybody approaches me and comes to say hello. Especially, you know, one of my viewers, it would be so nice to put you know, a name with the uh, with a face with the name. So, um, yeah, watch this space. Hopefully, when I film the next podcast, I'll have bought some goodies and I can tell you all about Yarndell. And as I said, I will vlog my trip over there, but that will be on the Dawn Stage channel. So, yeah, I think that's everything. So, thanks for tuning in. And if it is your first time stopping by and you haven't done so already, if you could hit the subscribe button, that would be amazing. Our channel is steadily growing. It's lovely to see um, new um, faces or new names in the uh, comments. I do read co all the comments and I do try and reply back um, in a timely manner. And um, as I said earlier, chat amongst yourselves. It's lovely to make new crafty friends, uh, share your opinions or tips. And if you've tried any of the crafts I've talked about or knitted or crocheted any of the things I've shown you, you know, share away. Um, okay, I'm going to wrap it up. So thanks again for joining me. Take care and I will see you either in the next vlog on Dawn's Days, Dawn's Days or I will see you in the next podcast. Take care. Bye for now.